according to the current statistics, there is a drop off in sacramental practice and mass attendance about vocations to priesthood and religious life, family and married life, and the difficulty of involving young people in church-based activities. And then comes the question, is Catholicism is in decline in the developed countries in the world? Yes, yes, we seem to be in serious decline. This challenges all of us, priests and people alike, how to make our church a more welcoming place where people who have drifted away would feel more cherished, cared for, and understood. Let us take a look at our nation today. Past weeks, or past week, perhaps, we experienced the most contested national election in our history. Possibly even today, the wounds from exchanges, accusations, and finger pointing, even among friends, painfully resound in our hearts. In view of this, how can we live into the future to heal the wounds of our nation and act constructively for the common good of all? Along with the all U.S. elected officials, we, the citizen believers, must see the widow in the gospel and ensure that she and all in need are cared for as God cares for us. Ultimately, we must step in and take our place next to the scribes the wealthy and the poor widow with their two coins. We cannot do anything to change the broken systems that rule us until we see that they are indeed broken. We cannot see Jesus until we see the widow and recognize her as one of us instead of someone or something that is apart from us. If we want to be like Jesus, we must see like Jesus. Today's scriptures give us directions to our own life. A good life manages to blend gracious talking with cheerful giving. And the value is in giving. It's our giving that is recorded in the book of life. Jesus is the great giver, that we may have life and life to the fullest. As a fine example of this kind of mutual help, we hear from the scriptures how Elijah and the widow of Seraphat helped each other to survive. During the famine, she shares the last of her food with the, uh, with the starving prophet. She gives without hesitation and is blessed in return. The poor widow in the gospel gave more than two small coins. She also gave the spiritual gift of her generosity and complete trust in God. God does not need our money, but we need to give it, be detached from it, and be ready and willing to give everything we have, all that we are, and our entire livelihood to God. Is that possible? Probably challenging. But this is what is we call trust in God. This is a spiritual gift that we will have far greater eternal ramifications for the salvation of souls than all the money we can find in this world. 
St. Paul coined the phrase, God loves a cheerful giver. And there cannot be, there can be no doubt that the cheerful gift is more acceptable even among people on an everyday level. Charity brings its own reward, says the proverb. There's a glow of satisfaction in giving to a good cause. It is also, in a gospel sense, the best possible investment of our eternal future. That treasure in heaven of which Jesus spoke when he invited people to sell all that they have and give to the poor. And it has been well said that from the perspective of our deathbed, we will be happier to think of what we have freely given away during our life than of what we have simply stored away for our rainy days. Let us reflect upon the compliment Jesus pays to the poor widow. She, from her poverty, has contributed as all she had, her whole livelihood. Do you contribute your whole livelihood? Do you dedicate everything you have, all your energies, your gifts, and all that you are to the service of God for his glory? We are called to give everything to God, not just a portion of, of our lives. So let, let us reflect upon how well you imitate this poor widow and seek to follow her holy example. Our families and our lives are gifts from God, and we must keep the integrity and unity. Our church is rich and blessed, and we must protect her from any decline. Our nation, as we celebrate the Veterans Day this week, this weekend, on Monday, tomorrow, our beautiful nation, we are a nation united as one. Our world, and our world is growing, one growing human family, where God is our Father and we are his children. We are all brothers and sisters in the same growing human family. Our country, as we celebrate the Veterans Day, we should pray, we should dedicate ourselves to make this nation the greatest nation on earth, and it is. All that is because we as a nation walk together, journey together to our goal of making this country the greatest on earth. All we need is to focus our lives on the common good of our people in the church and around the world, for we are not only called to be generous, but also be responsible for our brothers and sisters around the world. Amen.